Hey there everyone, Michael Hershenberg, team lead of the Hershenberg Group with Keller Williams in Southlake. I got Mackenzie Evans joining me this Hi. afternoon. Uh, today we're gonna be covering a very important topic. It's not the most sexiest of topics, but uh, it's very important nevertheless. Uh, when, you know, the market that we're in, uh, how to really kind of set yourself up during a recession or the talk of recession in a seller's market. So pricing is the, you know, one of the number one topics right now and really something very important to look at and consider uh, when you're getting prepared to sell your home. Make sure that your agent is really walking through the now comps, comps that are happening within a week, two weeks, three weeks. Why is this important? Sometimes agents have really been used to going six months, nine months, a year out and really telling a story. It's, it's not an accurate story right now. There are a lot of things happening right now with uh, interest rates on the loan side. Uh, you have comps uh, from new construction uh, that are starting to stabilize now that we got commodity prices starting to come back down. Comps in real time are starting to come back down also. So when you're comping a new construction house that was built six months ago to today, there's going to be a difference there. Right. And when you're structuring a position and getting a buyer, now you're opening that buyer up for outs of the contract if it doesn't meet appraised value. So that's one thing to really, really consider. Mm -hmm. Also the timing, the, the number of days that you're on the market if an agent goes in and misprices mm -hmm. this thing, yeah, right? Could be horrible for a seller if he has somewhere to go, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. just make sure that you know you price this. A buyer really is the number one person who can look and really, really tell if, if something is overpriced. They'll let you know about it and you know maybe even come in with a low offer at the mm -hmm. beginning. They'll be the first to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, a second tip that we recommend when selling during a recession would be look at the terms of the contract. Um, there's other properties in your block. Something that might help your house stand out is offering other financial options to the buyers. Two of these may be um, assumable loans or seller financing. And we really go into more detail about these two options in our video called pros and cons of buying during a recession. Yeah. So if you want more information about those two, go take a look at our videos. We'll have them in the link in our description below. Yeah. But you know, some other terms to look at maybe, you know, don't ask for a lease back, um, be more flexible on the closing date. Mm -hmm. Things like that in the terms might get your house sold more quickly. Sure, and something that I've seen, I actually used it earlier in the week with a seller that, you know, just had, she had pets. She had a little bit too much carpet in the property. She didn't want to put that bad taste in the you know buyer's mouth coming in, so we actually put in special uh, provisions and put it on there that we were going to come to the table with the as the sellers with a concession for new carpet. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a more favorable term. Great. That buyer is not no longer having to come to table with carpet money. Right. So it's making it more more attractive when you're moving in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another tip that we recommend when selling in a recession is just having the right mindset. Um, you want to. Definitely treat this more. We get we get when you're selling your home, you have emotion. You may, especially if you've been living there a while, you may want to just treat it more like a business. This will help you make more rational and um, informed decisions when coming to the table. Yeah. So. Yeah, just don't. Essentially, and it's, uh, real estate is an emotional process. Mm -hmm. We all know this. It's in, in line with our clients to just really set really strong expectations, communicate clearly mm -hmm. so that everybody knows really time frame, any contract changes. But again, this is this is a real estate transaction. This is a business transaction. Mm -hmm. There are things that are going to happen that are unknown. So just try to take a keep a strong mindset, look towards the finish line, start building that trust with right. your agent. And that really comes into my topic. So yep. really doing some research in the front on the front in and finding that right team, finding that right agent to represent you really, really strongly through the sale of your home. Uh, you're going to be using, you know, online uh, resources. Go, go and check reviews. Go back two and three years. See how, you know, some of their other seller experiences have been. Right. Um, it could really kind of just start opening, you know, your eyes to, you know, how, you know, great this agent is going to do for you. Right. Um, going into, you know, asking really, really tough questions on an agent. Hey, really, what's your track record this month? What's your track record been over the last six months as we're starting to see this shift in the market? Have you been getting, you know, properties under contract in a quick time frame? What's your average number of days on market as a listing agent right now? Uh, how, what's the percentage of uh, your above sales price right now? What's your ability to bring your sellers to the closing table? That's 
that's most important. So again, go through online resources, ask them the tough questions, but also ask, ask peers, ask you know, maybe uh, when you're interviewing agents, pick three and ask them all really straightforward questions to see if there's a strong alignment there. Right. And our last tip of the day when selling in a recession is um, just looking at the next investment property. A lot of times during recession, when you sell your current home, you know, you may not get that top dollar that you would have gotten in a, you know, a booming um, time period or booming market, but you're also not overpaying for your next home. So for you home buyers out there that are wanting to buy up, you know, you started with your first property and you're wanting to buy up, that gap in between selling your current home and buying your next one is gonna be smaller in a down market than it would be in a in a booming market. Sure, sure, sure. And, and with that said, something we, we hear with all of our sellers out there and going and buying the next home, they're sometimes worried about, hey, am I borrowing at 7%, I'm borrowing at 6%. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna how am I gonna justify that in the new home? Well, right. you're in a market right now, specifically here in North Texas, where you're still appreciating 19 yes. to 25 percent in some areas. So is this a good investment if you have to borrow, you know, borrow money at six and a half percent? You're still in an appreciating possession. Wait till it appreciates, mm -hmm. wait till the market stabilizes, go refinance at a later point in time. Right. Well, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we really, again, appreciate you uh, joining. Don't forget to click like and subscribe mm -hmm. uh, to join us on additional content like this. And again, for all of our sellers out there, just wanting to know, you know what your current valuation of your property, we'd love to do a custom home valuation for you. Let us walk you through what realistically can be accomplished for a sale of your home in this market. Thanks for your time.